Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Lorelai Shamayo. This is the MeWe Metaphysical Wellness Body, Mind, Heart, Soul Fairs. We have fairs throughout the Northwest. We're in Seattle, Portland, Salem, and Eugene, and we're also online. We interview our practitioners and our vendors so you can get a chance to know who we are before you see us at a fair. I'm here today interviewing Christine James Stern. Christine, it's great to have you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So what is it that you do? What do you share at our fairs? Well, my technical skills are basically being a massage therapist, energy healer, facilitator, and life coach. But for the fairs, I really specialize as those modalities of doing divine channeling, angel healing, and empowerment tools. Mm -hmm. So I'm an open and conscious channeler. So things come through me very easily. And I work with people's guides, with source, and particularly with their angels. And in that, through the sessions, we work on um, clearing, healing, rebalancing, reharmonizing them on all levels, uh, also in vibrational levels. A lot of times it's physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional, but this is also vibrational, interdimensional, and beyond. So it's really for those who are focusing on back, getting back into harmony, into their oneness and wholeness. Mm -hmm. And in those sessions, there's always these wonderful empowerment tools that come through that people get to take home with them and integrate and use throughout the, throughout the session and after the session to really be able to hone those skills in and help to bring them back into oneness. And those empowerment tools um, are very effective in, in helping them. So it gives them a sense of confidence that I can do this too. So that's, wow, that's sounds, what I offer. Sounds great. And for, thank you. And for the events, I'll be offering a shortened session uh, with their angels. And then I'll also be uh, given a talk. And I'm usually guided as to what is needed for humanity right now. And the, the talk right now that I'll be providing for the February show is about forgiveness. And forgiveness, uh, letting go to move you and the world forward. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that is, it's a very powerful, powerful tool to learn and, and to be a part of. And mm -hmm. so that we can really be free. Great. And that piece of where we're supposed to be. I just think so. All these different modalities. I'm just curious a bit about how they all showed up for you. There's someone uh, around a long time and like they get added and like, how do you choose what you do with someone in a session? Oh. <laughs> well, it's been an evolution as we are always evolving and growing. So divine channeling, mediumship, empathy, and these heightened uh, intuition and tools or skills were always a part of me growing up. But as a young child, um, when it seemed obvious for you, um, it wasn't so obvious for others. And in learning these things, it was learning that you're a little different and it wasn't always appreciated or understood or nurtured. So a lot of what people have done is, you know, repressed it and come back into the, out of the spiritual closet, so to speak, and learn through that. So also in my life, I had a very, um, I had some very blessed moments, but there was a lot of early trauma as well. And it was part of my, my soul's purpose to actually partake in some of this trauma, to really learn the strength and the power that is within us and learn to deal with those things. It's kind of the teachers in reverse, shall we say, that maybe these are not the, the methods of where we would like mm -hmm. to learn, mm -hmm. but it's how it was best needed for us at that time. And through that, um, through multiple different various forms of trauma, um, I, have, I have learned. And that's part of the soul's wisdom of bringing that forth. And with these particular skills and gifts that I've had, it's been able to help people in their process as well. So I've, I've become the authentic teacher, I believe, and having gone through these things to know what is working, what doesn't work, how I can help you, and how we can actually not only heal, but also to um, transform it and transcend about, above it. So that it is no longer um, that we are a victim to that or that that defines us that we can rise above and really be who we are supposed to be. So yeah. that's, wow. that was my journey. So not always enjoyable, <laughs> but enjoyable in the fact that, yes, there is a greater power within us that we can actually move 
forward and above. And that's, that's the, the greatest aspect of it. Wow. So, and that's, and that's what I help share. So this is my second career. Um, I was actually a lighting designer. So somehow mm -hmm. I'm always working with light. <laughs> so now I'm working more with the light of people's souls. And um, so I work with people's souls and, and really to help bring, bring what's, what I see within them um, and to help bring that about for people to, to recognize and see their own beauty and to see their own strength. So it's really about self-esteem and self-love and self-worth and self-confidence. And it's, it's kind of lacking right now in a lot of things. And being able to say that I can really love myself for who I am right now in this moment. I know there may be other versions of me, but can, can somebody actually say that they love themselves right now in this moment without saying a but after it? <laughs> or yes, but I wish this, then you're not really fully unconditionally loving yourself. Mm. So does that make sense? Oh, it does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like the depth and the, the spaciousness of your journey. Yeah, yeah. yes. So it's, how did you start? Go ahead. How, so how did you start like just how did you start turning this into your profession and well um i had one of the traumas that i had was uh what was it 2008 where it was the the recession of things and the change and i was again kind of a lighting designer and things were shifting in that way and i had a series of um of deaths there were 17 deaths um that went through within a 15 month span that oh. I was part of. So that alone was a lot to kind of go through then the changes of, of a job, a career. And I just knew that there was more, there's always, a, there has always been a sense of purpose to me that I'm supposed to be serving a purpose. Somehow I'm supposed to be doing this and what is this? So all of this has been the journey, you know, into each, each new evolution of who we are and what we're supposed to become. So that was one of them. And it was really working with my grandmother who didn't like to be touched as much. Mm -hmm. And it was, hers was the marking of it and um, comforted her while she was in her state and um, just gently touched, you know, her face and, the, and her temple and this deep sense of peace. I just felt as though, you know, she needed to be touched. And I did that. And to see how she just was so calm and so relaxed and welcomed it, even with the silent little, you know, or slightly audible, hmm, you know, just that, that she welcomed it because it was needed. And because she kind of rejected touch so much. Yeah. So I had a massage therapist at the time and who did energy work. And I said, okay, you've done Reiki. I know you do Reiki. I think I need to, I need to go through the attunements. And she's like, yes, finally about time. Took you long enough, <laughs> but you're doing it. Great. So that's what I did. And that, and learning Reiki and I became a Reiki master practitioner. So I did that all during this time, went to massage school and um, that was the beginnings. And massage, I feel, can only take you so far because I would sense that people would have, and, and even energy healing would take you so far that you had to be within your scope of practice that you couldn't, um, in a sense, help them move beyond. And that's where life coaching came into be so that you could recognize these things like, okay, I can, I can heal and rebalance and you know, help them through the healing. I know, I'm not the healer. I am a healing facilitator. So I could help them facilitate that and understand it, but yet not be uh, outside of my scope of practice and providing something that wasn't. So, but helping them to be able to move forward. It's like, okay, and that's where the divine channeling and the tools would, would start to come through. And there's been some transition because I was um, kind of in the medical slash um, intuitive aspects and those two are still not uh, seen you know they're still a bridge, not embraced right? together as yeah <laughs> yes so there's still some some skepticism and I get it I understand it but 
they're still working with people and I knew that there was much more that could be done. So that's how all of this came to be. So it has been, as I said, a series of growth and evolutions and evolving into things. So here I am now and, and def being definite that yes, I am a divine channeler. Yes, I, I have medium skip shills, skills. I am very em empathetic. I am, uh, have heightened intuition and this is, what I, this is who I am. <laughs> So, and I think many, there's many people who have that are just, but are sometimes just cautious to be able to tap into it and, and feel the judgment of mass consciousness of, you know, is this okay? And um, yes, it is okay. <laughs> and part of what we create with our fairs is, a, is the concentration of community is this is okay. That this is okay. It's your divine right. You you are a divine being, and this is who you are. And you're yes, it's very much okay. <laughs> so that's that's what I'm here to help. It's great. It's great. I imagine people come to you for all sorts of topics, and then you just flow wherever you know, exactly. what's wanted. And... Exactly. And there are certain themes that occur, and that's why I know um, when I'll get. Um, through my guides and through my angels and through my through source to say okay here's what's coming up and I will kind of go through those changes and evolutions of what of what's working what isn't so I actually experience some of those even before people do to know okay here's what I found that works here's what doesn't here are some tools to help you but the wonderful thing about divine tools uh, and universal tools is that they're always based in truth. And my truth may be a little bit different than your truth, but the underlining aspect is still truth mm -hmm. and it works. And they're very powerful, very effective. And because again, it's based in truth. It's based in unconditional love. They're based in wisdom. And these are all things that come together to help you to say, okay, and, and it's okay to be different from that. And, and to allow people the freedom to experience everyone's truth in the way that they need to without holding judgment. Because you don't wanna be judged for, being, for doing something different. So it's allowing them to, everybody to, to be who they need to be. And you may not agree with it, and that's okay but allowing people to have their freedom to do it just as you would want it. So mm -hmm. that's what these tools are all about. Yeah, it's great. It's great. If people want to learn more about you online, connect with you, where do they go? They go to www.spiritedcenter.com. Great. Okay. Yes. And there's all sorts of things in there. And my work is a little more unique. It's very synergistic and no two sessions are ever the same because <laughs> yeah. we're always working with your guides and, and your angels and, and source to help you where you are at that moment and where you are is always perfect. Great. Thank you so much, Christine. It's been lovely Thank hearing you. about what you do. Thank you again for having me. I appreciate it. You're I'm so looking welcome. forward to seeing people. Thank you. And those of us those of you listening and watching, you can find out more about us at mewefair.com. That's M-E-W-E-F-A-I-R.com. Bye-bye. Thank you.